Welcome to LA Fish Guys Aquarium Tech Talk. Today we're going to discuss the Neptune Apex controller and its setup. And in doing so, we're going to bring Jim into the 21st century. So today we're at Jim's house and we're going to be setting up a full Apex system on his tank, complete with ATO, with the automatic top off, uh, lighting control. We'll be controlling his main display lighting as well as his, as his refugium lighting. We'll be setting up various fail safes and other stuff on his system to modernize it and give him remote control over his system as well as remote monitoring. So stay tuned as we dive into the complete setup of the Neptune Apex controller and all the components required to do so. Enjoy. All right, so first thing is unboxing and looking at the components that we have. Um, this is the Apex controller. Uh, Apex controller is available in a number of packages. Um, with the base package here, which is what we have and then there's also the uh, Apex Gold system. The Apex Gold system, unlike this, uh, includes some extra goodies like salinity monitoring and stuff that we can always add at a later date. But I'm going to lay out the basic components of the Apex right now. Obviously, we have this is our energy bar 8. Um, this is an 8 junction power bar. Uh, it's controlled by the Apex, and you have individual control over each one of these items. This is our temperature probe. In here, we have our standard grade pH probe. We have our main apex brain, so this is where everything plugs into, and this is the brains of the whole unit. Um, just for reference, we have variable speed ports there. Those allow us to connect variable speed pumps. Um, case in here, we have JBOs. Uh, we'll also be connecting our lights and, and give us the ability to dim and create natural sunrise, sunsets, um, and control over intensity of his different light channels. We have our display here, and this is just a monitor that basically gives us a quick glance of parameters of the tank, temperature, uh, pH, ORP if he's got it, conductivity if he's got it, well, I'll display on this nifty little display and there's also basic control that can be handled through the buttons there. And this is an Aquabus cable, or excuse me, no, this is the network cable. And uh, our Aquabus cable here, which is mixed up with the uh, temperature probe, but this Aquabus cable is how we connect things like the Apex power bar, the EV8 there, to the main brain. And it looks like a USB cable, but it's not a USB cable. And with that, I want to point out um, you never want to plug your Apex into a PC through the USB connection because it is not USB and it will fry your Apex. So, um, Lastly, we have our AFS here, which is an automatic feeder from Neptune. I should have opened that first, but if you little feeder here is controlled through the Apex. We can set the amount of food that we want to feed, um, the intervals that we want to feed, um, and whether you want multiple times a day, or when you want it, etc. So, and then if you little packet of food, we have extra food as well. And of course, another Aquabus cable. That'll plug again into the controller or into the EV8. We have nifty little ports here so that we can expand the system as we go along and you expand through the use of different modules and these Aquabus cables. With that, we also have our probe calibration solution to make sure our pH probe is accurate. And then we're going to talk about some of the other nifty goodies. Um, this here is a breakout box. Uh, things like automatic top-offs and stuff like that make use of float switches. And the breakout box is the means of plugging float switches into the Neptune Apex controller. So you have this little box here and with it are six ports. Um, most float switches have two wires and so one wire is the actual circuit wire and the other is a ground and they're normally open, normally closed. Well you run two wires basically per float switch to this little device and each one of these spots has an address. Uh, when the float switch is open or closed you can have the Apex program to acknowledge that the circuit has changed its state and perform a function, in this case, ATO. So speaking of uh, breakout boxes, instead of using the Neptune breakout box, 
I've made my own breakout box. I use these at home as well. Um, instead of clipping little wires into the port, we have our little headphone style jack connections. And one of the reasons that I go that route is the float switches I prefer to use, these are Reef Fanatic float switches. Um, these are available at premiumaquatics.com. I really like these float switches. I've used them for years, never had any issues. And there's only two float switches that I personally will use, and those are Madison float switches and these Reef Fanatic. And the reason being is not all float switches are created equal. These really cheap float switches have a tendency to fail. They're not properly sealed where the wire goes into the float switch, so what happens is water gets in there and can cause premature failure. So I'm very picky about my float switches. I like these Reef Fanatic ones. They make setting up easy. They plug right into the ports, into the custom breakout box, um, which makes swapping things if you ever need to very easy. Um, we have four float switches for Jim because we're going to have a redundant pair for the ATO turn on and turn off. Um, two of them will be wired together. I use a little adapter to basically make them redundant. We've got our two float switches. They plug into one adapter like that. And they'll plug right into our breakout box. Um, we have another pair of float switches. These will be used for fail safes, high level and low level warnings, basically. So if the sump level is too low, Jim will be notified. If the sump level is too high, Jim will be notified. When the sump level is too high, we can shut off things like protein skimmers so they don't overflow. So we have our four float switches. Um, we have our pump for our ATO. This is a Spectre Pure liter meter pump. Uh, makes use of a 12 volt adapter, which we're going to plug into one of the ports on the apex. When the water level changes in the sump, as in evaporation, a little bit of water will be added until it's filled back up. So we have our ATO pump there. Uh, we also have a little controller here um, that will plug into the apex and allow us to control our JBO wave pumps. Uh, I don't know that we'll get to that immediately but we have that at our disposal as well. And uh, I think that basically covers us for the basic Apex components. So stay tuned as we prepare ourselves to install the Apex system. Royal Exclusive is the manufacturer of the highest quality German-made protein skimmers, pumps, and filter systems. The coveted Bubble King protein skimmers are made with the finest materials available and the world's quietest and most efficient internal and external skimmers. Royal Exclusive Red Dragon RD3 pumps are the highest quality, most efficient, and silent variable speed pumps on the market. They range in flow from 1,300 gallons per hour to over 5,400 gallons per hour. Royal Exclusive Dreambox filter systems feature welded PVC construction that's built to last a lifetime. They feature internally adjustable water levels, custom inset lids, optional internal LED lighting, internal media reactors, and so much more. Check out royalexclusive.net and royalexclusive.com for more information. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from 
MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's MyFishTank.com. One of the best things about going with an Apex is that you become one of the tens of thousands of other owners that love helping each other out. Maybe you get stuck, or maybe you just want to simply take on a new DIY project. Whatever your question is, the Neptune Systems Community Forum brings all of those thousands of users together to help you answer it. Many of the things discussed in this video series are also covered there in various posts. Or add your own question and start the conversation. That's forums.neptunesystems.com. All right, so first item of business uh, when setting up your Apex, obviously, is mounting. Now, there's a number of ways to mount your components. Some people make fancy boards. Uh, Jim does not want any of his equipment screwed in to the outside, so we're not going to do any permanent damage to his nifty new stand. Uh, but one thing I do want to stress is these are electrical components, um, and this is a computer system uh, or a computer controller, if you will. And with these devices comes sensitivity to moisture and water. So most important is mounting these components away from areas that they're going to get wet or lots of humidity and stuff like that. It doesn't do them any good and you will cause premature failure if they get wet or if they're in too humid of an environment. Um, so yes, it's humid underneath tanks. It isn't that horrible. Um, but in our case, we're going to mount them as far away from the sump and the splash zone as humanly possible. And as a result, I'm going to mount most of our components back here on the back wall where they're good and far away from the sun. Uh, so first thing we're going to mount is going to be our controller. we already got a spot marked out for it. Grab a couple screws. Make sure our screws aren't too thick. That'll be okay. And we'll start mounting stuff up. Controller brain mounted up in there, out of the way, out of the splash zone, not in a place where we're going to be banging into wires and stuff. Next up is our EV8. Breakout box. I mentioned breakout box earlier. These things can be used for a number of other things too. Um, you can actually add a little garage door button type of switch. It's a, another type of momentary open close type of switch and and uh, when you push a button, you can turn on pumps and stuff like that. I use that at home for my mixing tank. Push a button, and my mixing pump will turn on and run for an hour. Kind of nifty. And see, this is all pre-wired here. I soldered it all up using little headphone jack plugs. And kind of a pain if you're handy with a solder iron. Um, you can look inside the... Uh, Neptune Apex uh, comprehensive guide and there's some wiring diagrams for the breakout box plug and you can make your own breakout boxes assuming you find the right dim plugs. diagram back in there. Alright, so we've got our display and we want to figure out where we want to place the display. Um, obviously, the display gives us some 
relative information regarding temperature and stuff like that. Uh, the Neptune Apex gives you the ability to monitor through the web and stuff like that, but us tank junkies, we like to look at parameters and stuff like that on a regular basis, and the display provides a convenient means of doing that. Um, also, if Jim's manually feeding and he wants to hit what's called a feed mode, a feed mode is a function within the controller that allows us to shut off pumps or things of that nature. You can push a button here to select the feed mode, hit enter, and it'll shut off pumps if we have it programmed that way. So having the controller display mounted in a convenient location is a bonus. Um, as such, one of the places I'm thinking is right here, and we can run the controller wire up through the door there. Uh, another option would be on the back wall over there or on the side of the tank, wherever it might be. Again, you want it out of an area where it's going to get splashed and you want it somewhat convenient. Um, you don't want it such that you know, you're bumping up against it when you're working on the tank and hitting buttons, uh, but you want it convenient where at a glance you can see basic stuff. So that's kind of what we're trying to figure out right now is where Jim wants his display mounted. Alright, so uh, kind of decided we're going to mount it above the door here on the front face. I'm using this 3M double sided tape. It's the same kind of tape that they use to put uh, trim on cars, so uh, it's real strong tape. I mean, this stuff is a little bit older, so it should have enough stickiness to uh, really hold it well. I'm thinking we're going to just align it right there. What do you think, Jim? That looks good. Alright, so we'll align it with that little door edge there. Level and stick it. Jim will be able to use this as a step. It ain't going anywhere. And what we'll do is we'll staple that wire up to the door there. I brought my electric stapler. And we'll take a little piece of cardboard or something there just to protect our wires. Let me go grab the stapler. And so what we did is we got a little piece of airline tubing there. Put that over the wire here because when we staple this thing under the cabinet, I want to obviously have some tension on this wire here so that it doesn't get in the way of the door. The airline tubing will be such that it protects the wire. We don't want to cut that wire. So we're going to staple that right up there. Put some tension on there. And you're done. Alright, so we've got our components mounted, we've got our display set up here, we've got our Apex controller, commonly referred to as the Apex base unit, we've got our EB-8, and we've got our breakout box, where we'll plug our float switches and stuff into. The next step will be wiring up the Apex, so stay tuned, and the next part we'll cover Apex wiring and setup. 